Mr. Kearns. Good to see you, Andy. What's up? Well, I just stopped by to tell you I'm, I'm not going to be able to take that job you offered me here. Why not, Andy? Well, I just can't. Check the oil. Uh, uh, yes, please. I figured what we talked about might work into a pretty good deal for you. Thanks, Mr. Kearns, but I'm leaving town. In fact, I'm on my way right now. Goodbye. Well, it's okay. That'll be um, two dollars and eighty cents. Leaving town? Why? I'm sick of this place. I want to go where I can make some real money. Hi, Joe. About a mile up the road, washed out. Completely blocked off. Yeah? You mean we can't get through, officer? Raise your right, mister. Anyone heading in that direction better hang around here for a while. Be very long? We're working on it. Joe, I'll let you know when the road's open. Okay. Folks dropping the weight inside, you might be more comfortable. Yes, thank you. I can't get through down there, Joe. I want to use your phone. Okay. Andy you were talking with. Like so many boys today, it's hard for him to settle down to something steady. I know, but this kid has a lot in the ball. Just let me show you his car. You'll see what I mean. Uh, hello, Jackson. This is Bill Marshall. Yeah. Look, I'm stuck down here near the other side of the wharf. Now, Looks a little down. battered up on the outside, but... Uh, How about that motor, huh? It's really a beaut. Special job, isn't it? Kid put it together himself. He didn't say. Now you can see why I offered him a job. Yeah, I certainly can. I could add a tune-up service around here. Well, there's nothing wrong with a young fellow wanting to look around for greener pastures. No. But you hate to see them run off with just some vague notion of stumbling on a pot of gold at the foot of a rainbow. That's right. Thanks, Joe. I had a phone to shop at Stardale to wait open for me. I need a heavy-duty valve. Bad. Well, I better try and get around that washout. Good luck. I just saw that motor you built, young man. I should think anybody who could do work like that ought to be able to make a pretty good living. Especially in a community where he's already got a lot of connections. Connections? Fat lot of good they've done me so far. Now, just a minute, Andy. You know I offered you a job and a darn good one. Fact is, I need you. You see, there's a new service station going up right over the crossroads there. And I'm going to have real competition. And plenty of it. Son, you're talking to a man who's comfortably retired on the benefits of competition. <laughs> Lights. Folks, I'll have a lamp on in just a minute. <coughs> Well, this is really quite pleasant. I haven't seen a lamp like that in years. It takes me back a long, long ways. 
Andy here started me thinking about the time I was a young man myself, with no definite future in mind. And that lamp's a lot like one I remember that used to be in old man Cooper's drugstore. Cooper's was the only drugstore in town. It had made Cooper pretty independent, knowing he had the local business all to himself. Service was a joke, and that was about the best way to take it. But that night, it was a little different with me. I wasn't in any mood to be amused. Have a chair, Fred. You're making me nervous. It just so happens that I'm in sort of a hurry. Yeah, well, haste makes waste, son. My mother is not... Oh, well... she had rheumatism again? Now, see here, Mr. Cooper. I want a bottle of Esme's elixir, and I want it right now. Well, I reckon you know where it is better than I do. Besides, I'm busy. <sighs> That'll be a dollar eighty. What? It was only a dollar sixty before. Yeah, well, prices are going up. You mean you're putting them up? Young man, anytime you don't like the way I do business, you can trade somewhere else. He had me there, of course. If I wanted the medicine, I had no choice but to pay his price and get out. Funny how little things change the whole course of your life. You're going along with your head down, and all of a sudden you look up, and you're at a crossroads. On the way home that night, an idea exploded inside of me. Start a new drugstore. I didn't tell anybody about my brainstorm, but Martha here. She knew what I wanted. It was just his idea that he needed money to marry me. I was willing all the time, even though he was only working in the mills then. Yep. Three nights a week, I took the train to Springfield for a course in pharmacy. The other four nights, I studied till after midnight. Like most ideas that really pay off, mine required a good foundation first. It was a full three years before the fateful morning finally arrived. I was as nervous as a cat on a hot griddle. Right in, folks. We're ready for business. Oh. Well, sir, they were really astonished when they saw the ice cream soda fountain, the showcases with the cosmetics and toilet articles. It certainly looked a lot different from Cooper's. Most of them had come out of curiosity just to look around, but some stayed to buy. That'll be 75 cents. Thank you. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Cooper? Uh, it looks like I wandered into an ice cream parlor by mistake. Or, or maybe a ladies' beauty parlor. Mr. Cooper, there are two drugstores in town now. I aim to treat my customers the best way I know how. Give them higher quality and better service. Now let me tell you something, Buster. I'm going to give you a run for your money because I'm going to make a lot of changes and have a right smart drugstore myself. <laughs> <laughs> the way it worked out, competition was healthy for Cooper as well as for me. We kept trying to give the people something better. It actually benefited both of us in the town, too. It was different back in those days. A guy had a chance then. But today there are more opportunities than I ever dreamed of. Now why don't I find myself something someplace? Me? I'm sort of in the same situation as that old man Cooper. Not that this place is anywhere near as bad off as you say his was but with a super service station going in across the way. I've got to do some things around here, too. Expand every way I can. Like going ahead with that motor tune-up deal I talked to Andy about. Give good, complete, all-around service. That's the answer. Can I put her up? This 
will probably be a blow to you, but I just stopped for cigarette. Oh, that's okay, but the way you're headed, the road's washed out. Oh, brother. Those people in there are in the same fix. Why don't you join them? Okay, do me, and I'll pull on over. Right over there. All right, go ahead. Expanding the station. Make more room for people when the road's blocked. <laughs> you handle the 20? Yes. Say, business must be good. <laughs> Storm kept me from taking the weekend receipts to the bank. You didn't get around that washout. No, but that valve I need. I talked to a guy stuck on the other side and going back and getting it for me. I'm going to meet him later at the roadblock. Well, I'll stick around here for a while if you don't mind. Mr. Marshall and I are sort of in the same business, just different ends. Retail's mine, production's his. He just did something that nobody ever did in these parts before. He struck oil. Struck oil? Boy, that's the kind of luck I'd like to hit all of a sudden. So you think I was lucky, huh? Well, weren't you? For the past few weeks, that's all I've heard. Luck, luck, luck. Not only him, but practically everybody seems to think that striking oil is something that just happens. A lucky break, like, like finding a diamond ring while you're picking dandelion. I'd say you did just that. You know, it burns you up. After all you've been through, you, you want to try and pound what it's really like into some people's heads. I feel I earned what I got the hard way. My break was a long time coming, son. It isn't easy to find oil. It's even tough to find a place that looks like oil land. I'd been wrong plenty of times before, but I had a certain peculiar feeling about this last place, so I made a deal with the owner of the land. He thought I was crazy. Nobody else had ever figured there was oil there, and I wasn't too sure myself but you can't just play hunches, you have to have facts. So you study the geology of the ground, see if it looks like any other oil land you've ever seen. You prowl around, getting yourself a lot of samples of rock. Finally, maybe you find a shell fossil that gives you a real clue. At least, enough so it's worth taking the next step. Then, with a little bit of dynamite, you set off some charges under the ground. of the explosions are picked up on a seismograph, the same as with an earthquake. The seismograph records give you a picture of what it's like under the ground. And from this, you can tell whether there's even a chance for oil down there. Next, you make a survey to pinpoint the particular spot where you want to drill. Then you're ready to get your derrick up. Oh, sure, to other people, they seem to spring up overnight, but it's not that simple. A lot of work, a lot of dollars, a lot of engineering knowledge is represented in what you finally see towering against the sky. You check your equipment, all the chains and cables and all the various drill bits, a different type for cutting through all kinds of layers you may run into below. 
sand or rock, and you have to be prepared for anything, everything. You take delivery on your pipe, and it looks like miles away. You never know how much you'll need because you never know how deep you'll have to go. So you start drilling. And that's an experience like nothing else in the world. You'd have to go through it to know all the heartbreak. And the more you know about drilling, the more you worry. It takes money, men, machinery, patience, sweat, and guts. And of certain things, like money, you've only got so much. There's so many things can go wrong, so many risks. And you know that while carrying this kind of an operation, the odds are eight to one against you. Yep, eight to one that you'll go broke. You've sunk your every cent into this, but that's not all. Everything you've learned in your years in the oil business. All you know and all you believe in, your brains and heart and soul are in that long, dark, narrow hole in the ground. Day and night you drill, you remember all those other times you've come up with nothing. Went broke. I had to go back to drilling for somebody else till you could accumulate enough cash to try again, on your own. But still you go on. Even when you know you only have enough money left to drill 10 more feet, just those 10 feet further, then unless you hit it, you're through with just another one of thousands of dry holes. When you get the final answer, too much has gone out of you in the long, tough pull for you to have much feeling left, one way or the other. Then there it is, at last. A lump of mud, oily. Success. Well, when you hit oil in a new part of the country, a lot of oil company representatives come flocking to bid for drilling rights in all the surrounding land, public or private, just on the strength of one well coming in. Because with the demand for oil growing all the time, new producing areas have to be found. And when you're the fellow who brought in the first well, there's a lot of satisfaction knowing that you've helped change a backwater village into a town that's really going places. Of course, crude oil itself can't be used for anything the way it comes out of the ground. It has to be pumped through pipelines to the refineries where it is processed. And all the time, oil company laboratories are working toward the future. You see, there are thousands of privately managed competing oil companies trying to beat each other to supply better products for the consumer. Well, I guess that brings us back to here. Where pretty soon now, your job or might, just might be bringing you oil and gas right out of my well. Could be. Who knows? Everyone around here is pretty excited. Things are going to really boom. That seems to me this is a pretty good place for anybody looking for a start. If there's going to be so much money floating around here, how do I get some of it? What am I supposed to do now? Open up a drugstore or start drilling for oil? I think this man is just too modest to come right out and say it, but I think the point's simply this, young man. There are definite rewards for individual initiative and determination, patience and courage. Yeah, sure, I know. I've been hearing that Horatio Alger stuff till it bounces off my ears. Office boy to president. You too can own a big convertible and marry the boss's daughter. Well, that isn't the way it works, see? You get out of high school, you get a measly little job for a few bucks a week. You work hard, and every night you think, well, it won't be long now before they give you that promotion and that raise. If the raise is big enough, maybe you can even get married. Who knows? Yeah, your dream is big, and you work hard. At the end of six months, who gets the promotion and the raise? Not you. They give it to the boss's nephew. Well, on top of all that, your girl goes off with some other guy. Nobody knows where his money comes from, but he wears $125 suits and he drives a fancy convertible. You get a raw deal like that, you wise up fast. 
you find out you're wasting your time trying to make it the hard way. I know how hard it is to keep on believing in the right when you see people all around you doing wrong and profiting by it. You lose faith in the very things that made our country great. That's what's happened to a lot of people these days. Don't let it happen to you, Andy. If I hadn't so much faith myself, I'd get frightened of how corrupt some people in this country have become. Don't let them mislead you. Don't let it happen to you. You've got to keep faith in certain things, no matter what happens. Faith in God, and faith in your country, and faith in yourself. Because if we ever lose that faith, our way of life will be lost, too. Good light! <laughs> Now, how do we tell when the road's open again? Oh, the highway patrol will come along. That's something I don't think I'll wait for. All right, line up over there. Not you, kid. Now, would you citizens like to shower down whatever cash and jewelry you happen to have with you, or do I have to take it away from you? You and I seem to think alike, kid, along lines of getting ahead. You ought to have a pretty good chance right here. The guy that just struck oil, the owner here with a wad that could choke a horse and the dignified couple that look as though they ought to be pretty comfortably fixed. I can use you, and I'm offering you a break. Prisk these solid citizens for me, and you can be well on your way to that big convertible. kid, we haven't got all night. No bones hit. All you'll have is a stiff arm for a few days. I better get back on the job. You're going to be all right, kid. It's a good boy, Joe. I have an idea we're all going to be better for what happened here tonight. Mr. Kearns, I've been thinking uh, about that job. I was wondering if... It's still yours, Andy. A salary, and after tonight, what do you say to a nice bonus on any business you bring in? We hope to hear great things of you, Andy. You have it coming to you. Come back and see us in a few months. We'll have everything. Yes, ma'am. It'll be as nice a service station as you'll find at any crossroads in the good old USA. 